So last time we stopped here. Uh, now we're gonna calculate. Uh, we're gonna label the graph. Okay. So how do we label the graph? Um, okay. Let's um. If you remember all the terms over here, uh, uh, one point six nine, the zero point two omega c one, the zero or the five omega c one, zero point two omega c two. Well, these things you should be labeled there explicitly over there. Okay, I'm not gonna label it anymore, but uh, you should label in your test, alright? And then uh, you should also be labeling this as forty five degrees. This is forty five degrees. Right, and then uh, what do I need also? Mm, well, currently in this case, um, now I'm gonna label it as minus ninety degrees, as you know, just now from previously, and then this is minus forty five degrees. So this is forty five degrees now. And then it's going upwards. This is going downwards. Right. And then you also need to label the correction thing. This is the correction thing. So this line is the this green color line is the correction thing. Maybe I should also use a different color. It's easier to show you. Uh, okay, like back color la. So this line. It's the actual body block. Okay, this big thick line is the actual body block. Okay, and then there is a twelve degrees correction. I think it should be twenty four degrees correction. This is um, for this these two cases. Okay, this should be um, twelve degrees correction. Right. So this for these two cases because it's going downwards and there is two legs. So two legs means that you twelve times um, how many um, leg terms you have. Right. If three times you times three, if it's four times you times zero. So um yeah, so this is the thing. So how do you explicitly calculate it? And this is where um we're gonna calculate. So if you remember, this is the equation, the transfer function, right? And then if you were to simplify s equals to j to omega, and then if you were to do it up, you'll get this equation over here where your cutoff frequency is this value. Alright? And then this is the thing that I'm talking about. So, uh, let's simplify this in order for the angle. So if you want to find an angle at any spot, you can use this formula. It's still the same thing. And nonetheless, uh, this is not the formula, this is like, um, Okay. Anyway, so let's do it, lah. Okay. So let's because I want to calc I want to verify. Okay, whether is this twelve degrees and is this twenty four degrees? Okay. So I need to do that is is that um I have this range over here. I know that this is zero point zero one, right? This is the frequency at zero point zero one. So with this information, like what I can do is um, I'm gonna use this thing. Okay. Summation of them. Okay. So what is this thing? If you remember. This is actually your this one, okay? Your zeros. It contributes a positive phase angle. And then the gain itself, if you know that this is zero degree, so you're not contribute any gain or lag or whatever. So only lag or lag. Uh. So um, this one is actually your integrator one over s. So it's actually contributing a minus ninety degrees. And then this two, okay, this two minus nine is actually your lag. It contributes a minus angle also because there is two legs, so this is one leg, this is two legs. Alright, if it's like let's say if there is no square over here, you're only talking about one and two, so you're not talking about this only. Alright, so um, with this information, let us calculate the point where it is at 0 0.01. Okay, the omega is equals to 0 0.01. This is the the first point of your zero point two times zero point one. If you remember, zero point two omega c one is the first point, right? So where omega c one is actually zero point one. So zero point two times zero point one, you have zero point zero two, right? So this is the 
the, the frequency lah. Okay, so I can so I sub in 0.02 as the frequency. Yeah, current lucky I do this step, so I should have 0.02. Right, it's because 0 0.2 times the omega c1. So it's 0 0.2 times 0 0.1. What I have 0 0.2 times 0 0.1, 0 0.02. Right, which is the same thing over here. So I didn't check the filling. So this is the frequency that I'm gonna use. All right. And then uh, let me see. You may wonder why I use 12 degrees correction at 0 0.01 while I calculate at 0 0.02. It's because my graph is not drawn properly. It should be at this. It should be somewhere at this point. Okay. This is the line that I'm talking about, not this one. This is why I say that. This is why I use 0 0.01 just now because I black out. But nonetheless, let's continue with the frequency of 0 0.02. Alright, so I just sub in my frequency as 0 0.02 and then my cutoff frequency at um, this is uh, 0 0.1. Okay, and this is the this is my cutoff frequency at the leg, so it's 10. Why am I writing 20? This is 10. Okay, so um, yeah. So if I were to calculate, um, the value, I'll have 78.9 degrees, okay, which is, because this is the, the curve, right, this is the the line that we drawn earlier, 90 degrees, right, so the, the correction degrees is actually 12 degrees, which is approximately here, this value. If you were to take a look inside the MATLAB, it's also stating about minus 78.8, okay, which is about 12 degrees or so. But the, in the phase degree wise, they did, they straight away co um, correct the value. Now, however, for the body, for the gain thing, they, they actually didn't correct it for some reason. Or maybe I calculated wrongly or whatever. But yeah. So, um, there is a 12 degrees over here. But what I'm very curious is that, um, what is the, what is the values over here? Right? So, if you were to take a look, this, um, at this portion over here, uh, this line is actually um, this thing over here. Right? If you remember, this is actually five times the kind of frequency of the the lag, okay, which is this thing over here. So the kind of frequency of the lag is actually ten. If you remember this value, see W C two is equal to ten. So ten times five, right? Because of this frequency, okay, directly at this point, okay, is actually fifty. So we're gonna use a 50 frequency to actually calculate for the actual um, degrees over here. Alright, so we're gonna calculate this. Oh, one over. So I'll just put in my frequency as 50, as I said earlier. And then my omega c1 is actually 0 0.1, okay? Omega c2 is actually 10. And then this is the similarly the frequency and such. Alright, and then let me just calculate the. So, um, 90 degrees minus 90 degrees. This thing will become 90 degrees, and in minus 90 degrees, you'll have 0 degrees, and then minus 157.3. This, this terms will contribute to minus 157.3. Okay, so therefore, I have a 157.3 degrees at this point over here. Alright, so at this point over here, um, it is similar to your body plot. Right, about one minus one five eight degrees. So it's about approximately twenty four degrees difference. Although it's like twenty two degrees difference about then somewhere over there. Alright. So um let me see. For simplicity I'll just start shortcut, just tell you the difference between these angles over here. Right? Um this one. So this is actually twenty eight degrees I calculated. Okay. Or about twenty nine degrees difference. Right, to the origin. Okay, everything is to the origin. Okay, let's say if you like like 90 degrees, right? So there will 12 degrees difference from the minus 90 degrees. And then as for here, it's 180 degrees. So there will be a 24 de degrees difference from the 180 degrees. This is why we have minus 173, minus 157. And at this point is 0. So there will be a 28 degrees difference from here. And then let's check, check like take a look on, on at this point over here. Uh, this point is that uh, let's see. at 0 0.5 degrees, okay, which is at this point, uh, 
Hey, well, well, my a zero point five frequency, lah. Essentially, I say wrongly, which is like this point. Okay, this point, a zero point five frequency because uh five times this is the cut off frequency of the lag of the lead zero point one, right? W C one is actually zero point one, one over lead ten. So five times one over ten is actually zero point five. So uh, in the body part itself is about seventeen degrees. Okay. So all in all, uh, you cannot say that uh, these two points are about twelve degrees correction, but um, in a certain extent, they are almost there. You know. So uh, actually, yeah. So I, I believe you already know what I mean. So this is how you calculate the different angle points that you want to you know calculate. And then lastly, what is the phase margin of the of this phase block? The phase margin of the plot is you need to use the gain margin. I mean, you need to use the gain plot to determine. Okay, when the gain plot is at zero, okay, when the gain plot is at zero, which is in our case, is at this point, okay, at about um, 100, okay, about 100. So at about 100 for us, in this case, is about at this point over here. So our gain margin is actually this is the point, this is the limit point. Maybe I should I should like you know um label it in a more colorful way. This is the point. And this is the point where you if you any 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 degrees larger than this, let's say going in this manner, this is considered unstable. Alright, if you are going in this direction, the more you go, the more you are you are stable. This is why it is plotting in this manner going in this direction so you can see the let me see where am I okay my fault minus hundred eighty degrees is considered unstable okay minus hundred eighty degrees this line is considered unstable so any 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 degrees that it crosses this minus hundred eighty degrees is considered unstable alright so at this point we are still considered stable but we want to find the exact phase margin of our current our our transfer function transfer function. So we need to determine whether stable or not. So we use the the game plot, which is crossing intersecting the line the the zero the zero point the zero decibel point. We know that this is hundred about hundred frequency. So similarly, we use the hundred frequency over here. Then we can track down. Okay, this is the the point where it is stable, okay. And anything going up here is considered more stable. Anything going down there is going to be unstable. So this is the point for our phase margin, okay. So this this whole thing is our phase margin, which is also being labeled over here, right? From from whatever point to okay. Sorry, this is actually our phase margin. Damn it. This is your phase margin. Okay, your five. Right? So this phase margin, if you take a look, is the same about the same point as this point over here as the end. So if you have to compare, um yeah. So um that yeah, somewhere over there, like you know, somewhere somewhere over here, somewhere over here. About that about the same place lah. And you should know that this is the point, and this range is the gain margin okay, from the minus 180 de degrees to your point. Okay, if you remember in your Nyquist plot, your Nyquist plot will have a this axis, this is minus 1. If you are going in this direction, minus 180 degrees, okay, the, the nearer you are, the, the more unstable you are, right? So at this point, this is your phase margin. Okay, so currently our phase margin is is somewhere like nearer. Okay, so it's somewhere over here. So this is the data. Yeah. So this this can be re-represented in terms of matrix plot if you want to do that, right? By subbing in your frequency. Since you know your frequency, you can straight away sub in your thing and then you can calculate. But nonetheless, this calculation is the same exact same as your matrix plot. So you don't need to calculate anything. So um, hopefully this will give you a good concept of your gain and phase margin.
I mean your face margin only for this section. So I will stop here. And next video I'll talk about the compensator. Hopefully this is one video and that's it. So I'll see you there.